Hi. First of all, let me start off by asking you to please excuse my head cold, my bit of congestion I have here. I hope it's not too distracting. Um, I am being attacked um, by a group of people who um, challenged my position on the two witnesses. Not that it's an ultra critical thing, but um, I'm told I'm being mean because I disagree with the position that the two witnesses start the ministry way before the tribulation and that they are done at the very first part of the um, tribulation. Um, and, you know, I, I just, I maintain the two witnesses that are brought up in, in chapter 11 in the middle of the book and that this is when their ministry is in play in the 70th week of Daniel. But, uh, you know, let's, let me point out a couple of, um, I, I like these uh, timing mile markers that you can kind of stick a pin in and establish the setting. I don't know why I'm mean and I should bend and, and I, you know, I'm, I'm being told that I'm the one that I should be willing to change my position and just listen to people and not be so mean. Well, um, it, it kind of goes both ways. If we can find a way that if you find in the scripture that you're incorrect, can you maybe change your position? That would be different. I'm not being mean. I'm just saying, you know, I've, I've studied this a little bit. But don't take my word for it. Let's look at the scripture. A lot of times what what is easy to do, and I've done it um, myself in the past, and that is to proof text. You will find a couple of key phrases or verses, and you stick to those, and you hang on to those and say, here, now I'm going to make a whole doctrine around this. you got to read through the whole context, though. So if you would, um, I think you can see us. You can see my cursor over here. Let's take a look at this over here in Revelation chapter 11 with the two witnesses. Then I was given a read of, obviously this is John speaking, like a measuring rod. And the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of God, the altar, and those who worship there. So we have a completed temple by this point, And there are those already in there worshiping. So, it's, so it is a completed temple. Now, do we have a temple now? We, we do not. Yet I'm, I'm told that, you know, the, the two witnesses are going to be revealed um, next year or something and that they're all, they are already going to start their ministry and they're going to be done and they're going to be killed right at the beginning of the, of the uh, tribulation. So, um, but the thing of it is, is that the verse, the context itself, what John is writing here, the two witnesses are, are concerning the temple. I mean, he starts off with the temple. So the temple's got to be there. It's got to be built. Now, I, I wrote um, to some experts. I wrote to, um, it was the um, Temple Mount people over there in Israel. And I asked them about the temple and how long it would take to build. Well, one guy responded that it would take, you know, at least 18 months, 18, 19 months to construct it from the time that they're given the go-ahead. So we know that the um, Antichrist um, is not revealed until we're out of the way. The Antichrist is revealed later. We're looking for Christ. We're not looking for Antichrist, right? Otherwise, we'd be given this as a sign is that, hey, when you see Antichrist come up, Boy, you know, the rapture is going to happen real soon. No, we don't get that. We get, we're watching for Christ. The Antichrist is revealed later. Um, some of the passages that reveal that, for instance, among those would be the verses in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. So, so this is um, well into at least a year and a half into the tribulation period before the temple's even done. In fact, it's completed and we have people in there worshiping. Um, but leave out the court which is outside the temple and do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles. And they will tread the holy city underfoot for 42 months. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth. Now, we don't know exactly, you know, um, beginning the end of their ministry, but they can't be dead by the beginning of the tribulation if you don't even have temple yet. And that's kind of my point. Um, personally, I believe that 
that John here is parenthetically going back to before he tells us about the events in um, Revelation chapter 12. He's backing up here and he's picking up the loose ends. This is this is one of those moments, um, you know, if you're watching, if you're listening to the old radio serial or if you're reading a book, um, sometimes a lot of movies, a lot of TV shows, um, they will have the thing back in the old radio days, they used to call it Meanwhile Back at the Ranch because two things are going on simultaneously. So before you can see that, uh, you know, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, um, you know, that uh, the Lone Ranger is getting ready to do something and um, he's got to be rescued by Tonto. You got to back up and show what Tonto has been doing and how Tonto is setting things up and getting an extra horse and getting a couple, rounding up a couple men to go help him save the Lone Ranger or something. So it backs up and shows you how he's doing all this. So that by the time you get to the Lone Ranger scene, these are happening and you bring them together simultaneously because you can't show both events at the same time in a, in a book or in a radio program. Nowadays, some TV shows, like the old TV series um, 24, you'd see Jack Bauer and you'd have, you know, multiple um, miniature screens on the TV at the same time. So you'd see some guy here arming a bomb down here and you see Jack Bauer, um, you know, struggling to get the ropes off his wrist. And then you'd have another screen maybe up here and it shows the president in the White House and Jack Bauer's got to get me. So you'd show them all three things going on at once. So you'd do that maybe sometimes. But when you have written text, you have to go back. These are parenthetical chapters and these are chapters that, you know, are a parentheses. So John here is going back and he's got to bring us up to speed with the temple and what's going on in the temple because in chapter 12, He's getting ready to go into temple and some of the temple stuff that happens and the people who go in there and worship, the Jews, and the two witnesses and some of those events. So here, um, the narrative is interrupted um, in the middle of the, the woes and the uh, trumpets to give us kind of a, a background. So um, this isn't here just randomly for no reason. So we've, we're getting the story of the two witnesses. And then what we have is... Um, this describes who he is and, and um, what kind of power they have and what they're doing, what their ministry is. So their ministry is over there at the temple. And um, so we have, we're going well into the tribulation. We don't even have, you know, a temple until you get a couple years into the um, tribulation because that's one of the ministries, fake ministries of the Antichrist. When you ask Jewish rabbis, not the really liberal ones, but um, anything to the right of that, what they're looking for in the Messiah is they're looking for somebody of um, the tribe of Judah, and he must be the line of David, and he must give us our temple. That's what they're looking for. And that's the one they're going to certify and declare as this is our Messiah. So this will be him, and he'll confirm a covenant. The false Messiah will confirm a covenant and try to make peace over there to where on the Temple Mount or wherever else, but somewhere um, at this point, probably on the Temple Mount, they're going to build the temple, and it's going to take at least a year and a half just to build it, let alone have people up here who John has to measure and um, those who those who worship there. Um, so he's going to measure or count those who worship there. And then we have, um, when they finish their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war with, against them. And that, this is what John is setting up chapter 12. He'll make war against them, overcome them, and kill them. Now the beast is the Antichrist once he's possessed by Satan. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, um, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. In other words, it's, it's, a, it's a Jerusalem, where also our Lord was crucified, and that verifies it. Then those uh, from the people's tribes, tongues, nations will see the dead body, the dead bodies three and a half days and not allow their dead bodies to be put into graves. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them and make merry, send gifts, it's like a Christmas party kind of a thing to one another. A holiday now because it's, you know, happy dead two witnesses day because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. Um, so, and then we have... Uh, where they are resurrected and so forth, come up here and they, they ascend, okay? This is what I want you to pay attention to in this chapter. Now, 
with the part of the judgment and all of this happening, the woes, um, is the beast who is sent after the two witnesses. Now the beast is loose on the earth. Um, the second woe is past. Behold, the third woe is coming. So there's three woes, right? We read about that in uh, Revelation chapter 8, three woes. So this is at the second woe. And, okay, so now we have, and you can read the context here, but we'll verify elsewhere, the seventh trumpet. So this is way up here at the seventh trumpet. So we'll see, and we'll go back into chapter 9, and we'll see that this is the seventh trumpet. And at chapter 9, what will have happened is the fifth trumpet. So this stuff is happening between the fifth and the seventh trumpet. And we can, um, we can definitively say that. So... Um, then what happens in chapter 12, of course, is, is uh, Michael stands up. Satan now has access before the throne. It's like in, in Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2. He's ever before the Lord accusing the saints, right? He's also in the, like a roaring lion in the streets, seeking whom he may devour. He's, he's the God of this age, the prince of the power of the air. These are terms the scriptures use because the world is under a curse right now. So it's kind of Satan's domain. But he's always before the throne. He's got access to accuse, just like he did Job. Well, at some point, God says, I've had enough of this. Michael, you know, take care of my light work for me, will you? Michael, um, in so many words, he clips Satan's wings, casts him to the earth. So he's angry. And we know that Satan does, and this is all in Revelation. If you have questions about this, we, you know, and you can't find it, let me know, and I'll post it. But uh Satan enters Antichrist, and that's where Antichrist at that point, he's been around for three and a half years, but that's where he becomes the beast. Just like um, Judas was possessed by Satan, Antichrist is now possessed by Satan. He becomes the beast, starts to scorch earth policy. One of the first things he does is here, the beast comes in and kills the two witnesses. He and the false prophet go into the temple. They desecrate the temple. They cause the sacrifices to cease, and he starts, you know, like a wrecking ball, ball um, trampling underfoot the temple, the temple ground, Jerusalem, everything, and uh, start, even starts wiping out the Antichrist's old um, global system. It starts turning on everybody, a scorched earth, and even the, the religious system, even the beast system, but he's going to establish first his um, 666, the mark of the beast, all that stuff happens right in the middle of the tribulation. So here we've got middle of the tribulation stuff. All right, so let me back it up here. Angel with a little book. That's another parenthetical. <clears throat> and then chapter 9. So here's the fifth trumpet. Locust from the bottomless pit. These are demonic creatures who um, evidently can tell who's, you know, who's got a mark and who isn't. And they're not allowed to hurt the ones who have a mark on their forehead. So like the 144,000. Um, you know, the believers at the time will have, um, you know, mark for the Lord on their head. And it's interesting because uh, we have the Lord, um, Yahweh, and it starts with a yod, which is a little tiny, it's the smallest mark. And I don't know, it might be on the side, who knows where it is, but the mark on the forehead is 144,000. Well, we also <clears throat> have believers who are going to have um, the name of, of um, Jesus on their forehead, but the letter which is Yeshua. So it starts with a Yod. So both of them starts with, so it, there's going to be a mark, the Son and the Father, um, yeah, uh, Yahweh on folks' foreheads, Yeshua, um, or Yahashua, depending on how you want to pronounce it. <clears throat> Don't matter. So anyway, we've got the bottomless pit. Um, and um, so we've got this going on. Um, Here's the sixth trumpet. So we got the fifth and the sixth trumpet. But notice this about the creatures that are loosed. One woe is past. Behold, two more are still after this. So, so here we are at the fifth trumpet is one woe. And then where the two witnesses are and the beast is unleashed, unleashed upon the earth, that's the second woe. So that is one full woe in advance. It's the second woe where you have the two witnesses. Okay. This isn't me. This is Bible, and that's what it says. So we look at little mile markers like that that we can check off, and this is what you do. You look and you say, okay, the second woe is past. And you go, well, wait a minute. When are the woes? Are the woes right away? When are the woes? 
Well, we can stick a pin in when those woes are, and we can verify it by going back. And, well, how far back was the first woe? And this is what we've just done. The first woe, one woe was passed. That was the fifth trumpet. Before you had the fifth trumpet, you had the first, second, third, fourth trumpet, uh, uh, many events, and that took some time. And then you had all the seal judgments. So all the seal judgments have to happen, and one fourth of the earth is destroyed. So in the seal judgments, you got one fourth of the earth, one fourth of the population are destroyed. By the time you get into the trumpets, another one third of what's left is destroyed. So in terms of population, the seal judgments, you've got like two billion people are going to have to be killed in the seals. That's crazy. And then one third of what's left is another two billion, if you do the math, um, in the trumpets. So we are well into the tribulation for the two witnesses. So this is Bible. It's not me. I'm not just making it up and theorizing and just guessing. Okay. So um, any other questions or challenges, I'm willing to entertain them. But um, please don't tell me I'm being mean and I'm rude and whatever. If I'm just telling you the truth, I'm, you know, telling you what the scripture says. If you just got to get to the Bible and read it, be the Berean study and improve me. That's fine. It's all well good. And that's what you should do. But can I not do the same with you and say, no, whoa, whoa, wait a minute here. That's not what I've read. Am I not allowed to do that? Um, I think I am. In fact, I think we are all commanded to do that in love. But uh, that doesn't mean just because you tell somebody that, that they're wrong or whatever that you're being mean because you tell them that, no, that's not the way it is. That's not meanness. Um, I, I would say it's loving. All right. So. Um, I know there's a lot of pressure out there right now. People are really tense and excited and waiting, and, and everybody's waiting and watching for the Lord, I think. Everybody probably on here is. Well, no, actually, no. There are quite a few trolls who pop on here and say, there is no rapture. So you, yeah, uh, we had a, somebody clearly an atheist got on the, here the other day and was talking about, you guys need to find a new fairy tale and this kind of stuff, you know. So um, you, you do have that. But anyway, I know everybody's tense. Everybody's wound up, and we're all excited, but we need to be loving and be patient with one another, okay? And um, just take some time, take a breath, listen to some praise music, and um, pray, seek the Lord. God bless.